guys without any delay let's start solving questions and if you are not yet subscribed subscribe to my channel here comes the very first question guys the price of a pair of shoe is decreased by 10 percent whereas the number of pairs sold increased by 20 percent so we need to find the net effect on the revenue so before that let me take consider price equals to p total number of shoes sold is equals to n now what is the formula for revenue total revenue initially is equal to n into p so but after that there was a change that price is decreased in decreased by 10 percent decreased by 10 percent so price becomes 90 percent of price is equals to 0.9 p and increase of 20 percent in the number of pairs sold so n becomes 1.2 n now if we find the revenue latest revenue it becomes 12 ninja 108 1.08 np so initial revenue was np final revenue was 1.08 np what is the increase 8 percent increase gain percent equal to 8 percent that's it and moving on to the next question the second one there is a pack of 52 cards deck of cards rohan draws two cards together so we need to find the probability that one is a spade and one other one is a heart so probability formula is equals to number of favorables by divided by number of possibles total possibles so out of 52 cards there are hearts there are spades there are clubs and there are diamonds 13 each 13 into 4 52 total so now in the de de denominator we get total number of possibilities two cards from 52 cards total combination 52 c2 and in the numerator the favorables are only either a spade or a heart so we can draw it in 13 into 13 ways so this is the final answer guys uh, on simplifying it 13 into 13 divided by 52 c2 51 into 52 divided by 2 it becomes to the numerator comes to the numerator on solving it 22 26 are 13 ones are 13 twos are 13 by 1 or 2 the final answer option b is the correct answer so here comes our third question what is the greatest number which on dividing 1 double 2 3 and 2351 leaves remainders 90 and 85 respectively so 223 first number second number is 2351 guys so whenever the greatest number comes and here we need to think about hcf because highest common factor so the first one gives 90 as a remainder second one 85 so by common sense we can understand that we need to subtract 90 from the first number and 85 from the second number we get 1133 and here we get and now we are we have got two numbers so simply finding the hcf, HCF of two these two numbers gives us the answer so one double thousand 1133 and 2266 easily we can come to know that both of these are perfectly divisible like uh, one one double three into two gives us two two double six so highest common factor is 1133 option a is the correct answer and moving on here we got the fourth question related to time and work p works twice as fast as q okay p and q q takes 12 days it is given that q can complete the work in 12 days and we need to find if both p and q work together in how many days it will be finished so but here we got a clue to find the number of days taken by p because P number of days taken by P is equals to total number of days taken by Q divided by efficiency. Efficiency is double. So 12 by 2, 6 days. Or else even with common sense, uh, simply we can say that if, the, if a person is more efficient, they can take less number of work, days to work. So now if both P and Q work together, they take 1 by 6 plus 1 by 12 days is equals to we get 3 by 12 3 by 12 1 by 4 4 days is the correct answer so moving on to the next question without much delay so this question is related to time and work uh, but the difference is here is that payment is uh, payment comes into the picture so looking at the question a can do a particular working six days 
so a can do in six days and b can do the same work in eight days it's fine until here and both a and b have contracted signed a contract like uh, they have made a deal fine to do the work for 3200 but they completed the work with the help of c within three days so we need to find the total amount that uh, that is to be paid for the c now here the clue is that total work is done in three days by a b and c so let us consider that we don't know the value of c i mean how many days the, that will be taken by c to complete the work but the total days is three so here the equation is one by six plus one by eight plus one by six equals to one by three and solving this equation we get one by c is equals to one by three minus one by six plus one by eight now on solving it we are uh, taking the lcm 1 by 3 minus 6 8 are 48 8 minus 8 plus 6 14 14 by 48 this can be written as 7 by 24 fine until here so again taking lcm 24 3 is 72 24 minus 7 3 is 21 so 3 by 72 will be the answer guys 1 by c is equal to 3 by 72 3 1 the 3 24 so finally c can complete in 24 days now taking the ratio a is to b is to c this can these take six days a takes six days eight days and 24 days so the payment will be in the ratio of 1 by 6 is to 1 by 8 is to 1 by 24 so uh, total number of days taken to complete the work is inversely proportional to the amount to be paid because the, it depends on the efficiency so 1 by 6 is to 1 by 8 is to 1 by 24 is the final answer or final ratio so now taking the lcm if you consider 24 as the lcm least common multiple 6 4 is 4 is to 8 3 is, is to 1 so 4 is to 3 is to 1 is the correct answer i mean in our so c ratio c's ratio will be 1 1 part out of total parts 4 plus 3 plus 1 8 parts 1 by 8th part of 3200 400 is the correct answer guys option d so moving on to the next question here comes the seventh question related to trains so two trains okay each 100 meter long are moving in opposite direction so suppose that a and b a is moving in this direction b is in the opposite direction they cross each other in eight seconds so one is moving try twice as fast as the other the speed of the faster train is let's consider that a is moving with x speed so b has to move with 2x speed here simply the clue is that they cross each other in 8 seconds so let's uh, use of use the formula here distance is equal to speed into time speed into time so the distance is 100 meters of each train so total distance will be 400 100 sorry 200 100 plus 200 is equal to speed let's consider that speed here will be the relative speed see guys this is the most important point whenever two trains are moving in opposite direction the net speed will be uh, the sum of the both trains i mean speeds of the both trains so here net speed will be 3x into time is 8 seconds now x is equals to 200 by 24 so 200 by 24 so we need to come it is in the form of meter per second guys yeah the units are most important so we need to focus on units also meter per second because here 100 is in meters and 8 is in second so in order to convert meters per second into kilometers per hour 200 by 24 we need to multiply it by 18 by 5 now we got the final answer fee 5 ones are 5 40 are so 12 two are not 12 4 6 are Four tens are six ones are six threes are thirty. So thirty will not be the answer because thirty will be the value of x. But we need the faster train speed. Faster train speed will be two x. So sixty will be the answer. Option B is the correct answer. That's it. So moving on to the next question, guys. Successive discount concept. It is related to three consecutive three successive discounts of six percent, ten percent, and fifteen percent. So the net final discount will be out of these four options so let's consider that initially the pro product is of 100 units after six percent discount it, it becomes six percent it becomes 94 rupees and after 10 percent discount 
so 10 percent discount means 90 percent by 100 into 94 is equals to 84.6 then after 15 percent discount it becomes 85 by 100 into 84.6 it becomes 71.91 so guys this is will be the this is the right procedure so after the first discount after 6% discount it becomes 94 then after it becomes 10% discount 84.6 after 15% discount 71.91 if you consider it as a single discount the net discount will be 100 minus 71.91 so 28.09 D is the correct answer. So guys, moving on to the ninth question. It's related to the probability, the concept of deck of cards. So here again, it comes. There are there were 52 cards out of which two cards are drawn. So what will be the probability that the, both the cards are kings? So simply numerator by de denominator is equal to total number of probables by total number of sorry total number of favorables by possibles. So simply in the denominator. In how many ways 52 cards will be selected out of 52 cards so there are 52 c2 combinations in the denominator and total number of favorables only kings so in the whole 52 cards there will be four kings of each symbol so four kings we need we need two kings out of four kings so four c2 value four c2 combination four into three divided by two it becomes 6 2 into 3 let's consider now on simplification 2 into 3 divided by 51 into 52 divided by 2 into 2 so now on simplification 2 ones are 2 26 are 3 ones are 3 17 are 2 by 17 into 26 final value will be 2 by 4 42 or 1 by 1 2 21 option c is the right answer and guys moving on to the next question here comes the concept of logarithms so it's simple log 9 to the base 3 minus log 256 to the base 4 plus log 125 to the base 5 so the simple concept here is so log for example log b to the base a is equals to c then we can write it as a power c is equals to b so in another way i can say that log for example log 36 to the base 6 this can be written as 2 because 6 square is equals to 36 so now we need to apply the same concept here the property of logarithm log 9 to the base 3 can be written as 3 power x is equals to 9 let's consider so x should be 2 now 4 power x here 4 power x is equals to 256 so x will be 4 and similarly again 5 power something is 125 then it should be 5 cube 5 cube is equal to 125 so finally log 9 to the base 3 value is 2 minus 4 power something 4 4 power 4 256 plus 5 cube 2 plus 3 minus 4 is equals to 1 answer is 1 and moving on to the next question guys 11th question this is related to the concept of d arrangements so there is a separate topic called d arrangements so what the concept will be for example if you observe the question there are five letters and five addressed envelopes and the number of ways in which all the letters can be put in the wrong and wrong envelope so let's consider a b c d five letters and envelopes let's consider some envelopes so i number the envelope belonging to a as one two three four five so actually a should be placed only in the first envelope i mean corresponding envelope b should be placed in two and c should be placed in the third one and so on but we were asked in how many cases a should should not be placed in one but can be placed in any other b should not be placed in second one similarly now solving this we will be having one formula d arrangements is equals to fixed formula standard standard formula n factorial into 1 minus 1 by fact 1 factorial plus 1 by 2 factorial minus 1 by 3 factorial plus 1 by 4 factorial 
minus 1 by 5 factor actually the formula goes on till the n value but here n value is 5 so it's n of until 5 n factor it will be 120 into 1 minus 1 by fact 1 factor will become 1 minus 1 0 okay plus 1 by 2 2 factor is 2 minus 3 factor is 6 minus 1 by 6 plus 4 factor is 1 by 24 minus 1 by 120 it becomes 0 1 plus 1 minus 1 1 by 2 minus 1 by 6 4 by 12 it becomes 1 by 3 plus 1 by 24 it becomes LCM is 24 so 3 8 is 9 by 24 9 by 24 minus 1 by 120 Again solving this here the LCM is 120. 24 5 are 9 into 5 45 minus 1 is equals to 45 minus 1 44 by 120 guys. The final answer is 120 into 44 by 120. 120 gets cancelled. Option D is the right answer.